Good evening, everyone. Glad to see you all showed up. Despite the fact there's all kinds of other meetings, garden club and this club and that club and so on. Um, I suspect that most of you know who these people are, in case you do not, from Roman Kreider, okay, out there, and uh, Russell Korth, and we have Glenn uh, uh, Cummins, sorry, <laughs> Paul Burton, and the, the, the erstwhile Jean Reed. Mary, Mary was going to be here tonight also to keep him in check, but she feigned a little sickness so she wouldn't have to show up with it. <laughs> I thought you were picking corn. Huh? I thought you were picking corn. Well, that could be <laughs> now, what, what, what you see here at this particular point are, are these people today. And I just want to give you, and I'll pass this around, just so you can, they're going to be talking about the last uh, 60, 70 years. Most of them, if I may say so, are in their 70s or 80s, same as I am. Um, so I went back. I went back. In, I went back into our files just to see what these people were like 50 years ago, 60 years, and so forth. Uh, so I'll pass this around. I'll hold up first. Uh, this is obviously the prettiest one in the group, and that's Ramona. This is the, this is the day of her wedding. Thank you all. Here's a handsome brute. Here's a handsome brute. I ever saw one. Uh, Russell Korth in 1951. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Well, I know what this was. This was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is taken from a photograph which showed the, was that the one that had the burning of the mortgage of the church? Okay, 1951. Are you going to pass that around? Okay. And, uh, <laughs> okay, and this one, uh, this is um, uh, a little grainy because I had to blow it up quite a bit. Uh, this is Len Cummins, 1950, when he was a member of the Volunteer Fire Department, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I think. No, not 50, no. I was in 60 to 70. All right, so well, as you were 50, whatever. This is 50 something. I don't know where you were, but you were. In the yeah. All right, and then uh, well, uh, Mary's Mary's not here. Mary's not here. I could not find a picture of Jean. She broke every camera, I'm sure. <laughs> but I did find a I did find a picture of. Mary, 1948, a full game family reunion. Wow. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're probably with the G. I'm with the G. The little baby. He's only five years old there. Are you changing? Okay. Um, okay, then I really, I, I really had to look hard. To find one of Paul. <laughs> yeah, Paul Burton. I went through everything I had and I finally had to turn to one of the um, school pictures. And this is Paul in the eighth grade graduation class of 1936. Now I had to blow it up quite a bit to pick him out, but there he is. Okay. All right. 1936. And I also, this is a picture itself of the 36th eighth grade graduating class. Now, you can't see all the people, but I'm there. Uh, Lois Fink, Delmer Myers, Russell Korth, uh, Fern Lutz, Marcette Wilson, that would have been Leroy's sister, Dorothy Miller, Paul Bertram, Ruth Bertram. That is your sister. Yeah. And Betty Franzer. Oh, wow. And you'll see, uh, you'll see Paul in, in, in the back. That's the only one I can find in here. Up here from our file. In our file, in our file, which are all on the computer, we probably have upwards of a thousand photographs at least. And that's more right here. Just to show that uh, I am an equal opportunity moderator, 19. Okay. Uh, I was 
Okay, now we have all the introductions in order. There we will get started. This is a really a very informal occasion. It's basically an opportunity for uh, five of them here to tell whatever lies they want because they're old enough so there's not too many other people living who are going to fall in the wire. And, the, uh, and also to get some exchange from the audience, if any members of the audience want to dispute what they say or add to what they say and so on. So I thought that uh, I, I would uh, kind of list a little bit of things from the people. Uh, one of the things I want to ask, how many of you work for MicroSwitch? How many work for MicroSwitch? Just one. How many of the audience work for MicroSwitch? Yeah. 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 Some, somebody told me there were yeah, yeah, 3,000 people at one time. Four. 3,000. Okay. Um, how many of you were in the military? Okay. okay. All right. Very, very good. Um, I, I, I had a chance to. Um, I had a chance to talk to most of them on the phone and so forth and learn a little bit about their background. But I was going to ask uh, uh, one of the things that Lynn Cummins was telling me when I discussed with him. Where was it, uh, Lynn? Where were you born? I was born in Henry Taft's house. Okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> remember Henry Taft? Not there now, but, but yeah. You got it. How many people remember Henry Taft? Oh, I do. Oh, Henry Taft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I must say that from, no, of course, I didn't know him. Uh, I've only been here 11 years. But from the stories I've heard, uh, some of them from, well, most uh, graphically from uh, Leroy Wilson, the late Leroy Wilson, but Henry was quite, quite a character, okay? And uh, so you were born in that, in Henry's house. In his house, right. Which is on the, was on the corner. Right. Where right. Shuey's house is, right. Where Shuey's house, in other words, that would have been on Mill Street, that would have been the Cherry. south, east, Warner? Southwest. 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 Okay, there's a, new, there's a different house there now. I mean, that's all right. Okay, and then he had a barn behind that. Right on the alley. Right on the alley. Yeah. Where, was, where was Henry living at that time? He was upstairs. He lived upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. How did you guys put up with him? <laughs> because you were pretty young. Yeah. I was like, yeah. We moved when I was five years old, by the way. So. Okay. All right. We were five years. Lorraine was born there too, by the way. I was born there four years later. Yeah, four years later. Yeah. Well, if, 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 any, if anyone has seen some of the uh, stories that you are Wilson told about Henry Taft, reread them again, because some of them are, especially just Henry's relationship with his uh, mules. I understand he talked to the mules better than anyone else. And he also had a team of horses. He had a team of horses? Yes. Okay, and, and I got several pictures that showed him uh, doing, uh, taking kids around in the bobsleds in the wintertime. He parked that bobsled in front of uh, what at that time was Strom's store, and so on. By the way, talking about Henry Tapp, it, uh, we don't have it here, but um, I was always impressed by the sketch that Dwayne made of Henry Tapp's barn in the back and turned it into uh, a very striking Christmas card. I don't know if anyone uh, can remember ever having seen that. But if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, sometime go up to the Kent Bank, and you know they have the three tellers, one, two, three, well, one, one on the farthest right. Look back behind that teller, and you will see a huge photograph of that, of that particular card back there. So you're, you're in more okay. But you're in banking services, nothing else. <laughs> okay, then after you, you left there, where did you go next? We went down to Larry Whitman's house where he lives there. Okay. I had been there for five years. Okay. And he turned that into a regular farm, by the way. So, okay. <laughs> he had chickens there, two hogs every year, and he had a cow, a Jersey cow, and he milked that, and we sold milk to four people. Right. Virgil Dry and Harry Butter and stuff. Okay, and this was before, this was before they had the Oak Ridge subdivision there. And actually, this right. was before they had the Arabian horse farm also. Right. right. How many are aware that there was an Arabian horse farm in Cedarville? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was in that, where the Oak Ridge subdivision, <laughs> roughly 20 acres there, and from about 1945 to 1950, there was an Arabian horse farm there by Dr. Khan, uh, and then uh, he lost his lease there and it was turned into the old bridge. So, yeah, are you? I might interrupt you, Jim. No, go ahead. We are the ones that bought the property. Yeah. And we told Dr. Khan he should move his horses because we were afraid that our children, our poor children, might get close to those horses which were in the barn which is on the property. Aha. Uh -huh. Not incidentally, 
is a place that I spent a good deal of my childhood because Dad rented that place until I went into service. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, he, well, he actually lived on Cherry Street. Pardon? You, you lived on Cherry Street yes. at that time. Okay, and as I recall, your house was built on the foundation of the original, one of the, the ori Henny houses. Original Henny house. The original Henny house. Yes, we tore it down, two-story house. It was in bad disrepair, so we couldn't do anything about it, but it tore it down and built what we have today on On the foundation. Okay, now in case, by the way, in case uh, you're interested, Len, uh, I will give you this article, you may have it. You don't realize that you were living in a haunted house. Yeah. Did you know that's what you were saying? Yeah. 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 This is an article that appeared in the, uh, the Freeport newspaper a number of years ago, well, maybe 20 years ago, whatever it was. And uh, anyway, there were ghosts reported in that house about uh, just before 1900. Okay. Now, I know that Claire and her husband. They say no, there are no ghosts there. However, uh, Mrs. Yeager, who lived there at that time, Thank you. she said that she heard knocking on her bedroom door. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's all I love, by the way. That's, that's, a, that's a rig of picture, by the way. <laughs> okay, now, yeah. Russell, you for many, many years were the, the sexton at the cemetery out here. Yeah. How many years did you serve? Well, as sexton, it was only about 10, but I was on the board for 30 years. 30 years? Over, over 30 years. Okay. When, when did you start? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the year. <laughs> okay. I just out of curiosity, I mean, with 30, 35 years in, in the cemetery, and then uh, Bill. Bill Pink is. Yeah, Bill. Bill. Yeah. How many years? Well, my crystal would say, am I tired of it yet? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I mean, with 30, 35 years, uh, you must have had some strange experiences there. Search your mind. I can't think of anything abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> well, the patrons didn't give you a hard time. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Anyway, the, the but uh, Russell was there for the rest of your time. Were you basically a farmer out in, in during that time? You were a farmer up in your particular. Uh, oh yes, I farmed all farmed all my life. But I'm still farming. Okay. <laughs> that same property where you are now? No, I was born on the corner right there at the highway. Right. Uh, the, this is the highway 26 and uh, and Elm. No, or right. Angle. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then uh, when uh, we got married, I rented the farm uh, yeah, a quarter of a mile on east mm -hmm. on Elm. Mm -hmm. And then in 55, we bought where I live now. Okay. Now, how many of you remember the, uh, the old settlers' reunions and, and pickets? Okay. All right. Now, you, you, you can go back farther than that one. The old settlers before that was on that farm where I was born. That's that's, this, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the they were for a long time they held the old settlers picnics right in the center of Cedarville, where we now have Wood uh, Lane Park. But uh, just about the turn of the century, uh, that ground got pretty well downtrodden, got a lot of dust and so forth, and wasn't suitable. And so uh, about, 19, I think it was about 1900, 1890, yeah, about 1899, 1900, uh, Eliza Clayman had a 40-acre piece of land that she had inherited from her, fa her father, uh, which was located on the farm you're talking about, and she leased it to the old settlers, as I recall, for $10 a, a year or some strange thing. And you were telling me the other day that the you can still find where the old hand pump was? Yeah. Okay. Now, where is it? That's not operable anymore, is it? If you, it the, if the pump worked, you had to, I pulled it out and, so we could farm, didn't have to turn out for it. Okay. <laughs> but it, it still pumped water. So you had uh, the windmill pumped for our cows, and when the wind didn't blow for a few days, the tank could get empty. Well, our it was a pressure pump, it was hard pumping to pump it up to the cow tank. 
So we used that take a water tub down there, that old pump down there in the pasture, mm -hmm. and pump that uh, so that there was good water in that well. Okay. How any idea how many years they used that for the old settlers reunion? Well, I don't know when they switched and went from there down, down to Cedarville. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, now for uh, Ramona. Uh, Ramona, uh, back in the 1950s, 60s, I'm not quite sure, 50s. Okay, we had a volunteer, well, we have a volunteer fire department now, but at that time um, it was far more primitive than it is today. And uh, as I kind of gathered from reading the newspaper articles, they basically had a uh, telephone answering service, which was manned by volunteers. How many? Probably five or six. Five or six? All, all women? Mm -hmm. Okay. And at that time, of course, you were living in, in Cedarville. Okay. Who else was uh, on, the, on the service? Mm -hmm. Denise Dittler was one of the callers. Nancy Heidmarker. Mm -hmm. I can't really remember. He's <laughs> <laughs> I think Don Bowen, maybe. Okay. All right. Okay, the idea being that people would call in if there was a fire or a problem, and then what would you, you must have some central place of sending this. Every, every all the firemen had a phone in their house, and so when a call would come in, it would come into everyone's house. Okay. And then if someone wasn't on the phone, because we had to say our name, then you called the other people's list. Okay, but when a call came in, it came in simultaneously to all the firemen? Mm -hmm. And how many firemen did you have at that time? Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's a picture of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know. Let me see, I think that's the same one I, I took. Yeah, that's the same one I used to take uh, Lynn's picture of. Take a look. See if you can spot one in there. Yeah. Okay, on the uh, what type of equipment did you have at that time? You still weren't using that old hand pump or anything. No. What day was it? Well, that was. This was one of the new fire. Oh, that was 1950. Yeah, in the 1950s. So they got the new one in 48. Yeah, and then um, I don't know what they had. Okay. Is there anyone in the room here who also served on the fire department? at that time, or at any time? I did any time, but not that time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, later on, I did some time. Yeah, prior to that time, all they had was that hand pumper. Hand pumper, right. And Which, of course, has disappeared. Two fire uh, uh, twice, two fire. Uh, not the fire pit. I haven't seen it, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I know that we bought the fire truck, so the, the fire department bought the fire truck in 48. 48. And it came in about June of 48 because my father built the garage. And at that time, it, it, even, it wasn't even painted yet. And all the trustees were lined up with it, and they took a picture in front of a, the shop there. And I could tell because the walls were painted. So it had to be around June of 48 when they got the truck. When they got the truck? Yeah. Okay. Well, was that, did you kind of consider that was a modern era starting for the fire department? When they got this, the new truck? Okay. How long did you continue using this call-in system? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, my father was the chief, and he had of the shop across the street from me. Mm -hmm. We both had fire phones, and we were both on the department at that time. So when they call, I we would get the call right, right away. And what happened, some people that were out farming that were on the fire department, it would be very difficult to get a hold of them. All the time, they don't want to get to a grass fire, yes. get off their back, before they would even get in off the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramona, I remember the siren would go off, mm -hmm. and then everybody come. <laughs> when did that start happening? Well, they still came, even when we had a call in the us. Sometimes you still have the siren, though. Yeah. Sometimes there wasn't anything driving around. There were a jerk or something. I always wanted to drive them to drive the fire truck. I didn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
to arrange that for her today somehow. <laughs> <laughs> they do everything now, so. Huh? They do everything now. Yeah. Okay, all yeah, right. Anyway, I want to stop and uh, turn to uh, Paul. Uh, I don't remember, maybe it was a couple of years ago I was, I, I interviewed, I was talking with you, and you graduated from this school when? Uh, 36 was the 8th grade graduation. Yeah. Did you go on to the two-year high school yeah. program? I went to the two years of high school was, was here. Right. Because there was 10 grades here. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I had the option of going further as going to either Orangeville uh, High School or Freeport High School. Frankly, I was scared to death to do it. And I didn't do it. <laughs> so as a result, I've never graduated from high school. Okay, but you were, you were telling me about what? Who was it, uh, Al Cummins, who hired you? Yeah, when, when was dad. You know, your dad. Okay, now let's tell a story about what you did. It's, it actually has to do with the school here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Are you referring to digging out the basement? Yeah, I'm referring to digging out the basement, right? <laughs> well, that was probably back in 1940 or 41. Uh, and as uh, uh, Jim said, that uh, I started work for Al Cummins. And uh, Al was working for Stover Manufacturing in Freeport at the time. He was doing cement work on the side. And uh, so I started work for him in the summer of 1940. Uh, later in the year, and I think it was 1940, that um, he contracted to pick out the basement here because. Uh, right underneath here. Right under here. Because all that we had thrown in the basement was uh, just a sort of a dugout place where the central furnace was located. Old Dutch uh, Dutch uh, Chippy was the, uh, the uh, custodian here, yeah. and that's where he whiled away his time. So anyway, um, none of the other part of the basement had, had been excavated at all. And uh, uh, so uh, on weekends, Al and uh, I forget who the other person was, it may have been Stumpy Holman, or like a hero, uh, his uh, brother in law, uh, and myself uh, would dig. And what we did is have a way, we cut a hole in the, the south wall right about under where I'm, I'm uh, sitting here, uh, and we put a uh, uh, a plank runway down into the basement. We started digging at that minute. And uh, so every wheelbarrow load of dirt had to be wheeled out and dumped out here up on the side at the location of where the old ancient cemetery was located. And uh, uh, during the week, I worked by myself down there while they were working on silvers. We finally got down to the point where uh, some more dirt to excavate and we were <coughs> down to solid rock. And that was quite a chore because we'd have to uh, ram a bar under the layers of rock, try to prop it up as well as you could when you were working by yourself and use a sledgehammer and beat it until it broke. Load it up in this steel wheel wheelbarrow. <laughs> steel wheel wheelbarrow and maybe None of you ever wheeled a steel wheel wheelbarrow. Uh, you never missed anything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, that's what it was. And after we got uh, that all dug out, we built our forms down there, and uh, then we brought the concrete back down into the basement. Same way, one wheelbarrow load at a time, with the one single wheelbarrow uh, mixer outside. So uh, I, I can't tell you exactly how long that took, but it consumed a great deal of time. At, at the time, I was uh, uh, 18 years old. I look at 18-year-olds myself today, and I wonder, I wonder if they could have done what I did back then. <laughs> First of all, I think if they uh, uh, would have ever wanted to do it. <laughs> but back in that day, you, you worked and you thought not being about it, you, you worked. Do I dare ask how much per hour you were paid or was it a job? 
25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour. Okay, we need that. You need that. You need that. You need that. You need that. That was the entire cell. So, the, the entire room that is underneath what is here right now. Yes. Now, did you also go toward the, under the north section too? Under the north section. Yeah, now that's partially, only partially dug out now. Yeah. Okay. Because the rest of the half of the north section is dug out, and uh, then there's basically crawl space on the rest of it. One of the interesting things on the north section, just beyond, and Dave, Kaiser, Dave, yeah, you remember when you were working down there on the furnace, remember there's that hole in the ground next to the furnace, the square pit light. That was the drain, I think. Well, yeah, I've often wondered what that was down there. It because wasn't a drain, it just that it was rock, and it it's had to go somewhere. Up. And that's where the water no, soaked back into the... There couldn't have been a drain there because of the rock formation. Well, 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 well I'll tell you, I, Dave will vouch for this. All I know is that when we run the condensate from the, mm -hmm. uh, from the furnace now, we have a long hose that goes into that hole. That hole never fills up. <laughs> never. Mm -hmm. now, I, mean, I don't even know how far down it goes. Several feet, I think. Now, maybe it just goes into the rock and kind of goes yeah. this way. I have no way. Anyway, that, that would, no, I wouldn't want to do the job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Certainly not even at 35 cents an hour. Anyway, Gina, <clears throat> Gene knows everything that is hap has happened and is happening at that intersection. Okay? <laughs> now, for you who have not been here since, say, more than Ten years, such as myself. Um, what kind of changes have you seen at the intersection of 26 and, and uh, Cedarville Road, Tomline Road, Washington Street, whatever you want to call it? Well, the first change I saw was blackout. It's all blackout. What was it before? Right. When? When did they change? I don't know. I must have been looking, but I was. Uh, <laughs> I remember when it was a gravel road. Okay. In fact, you could travel over beyond. Henderson and Dominic went to where my daughters and farm in the spring it would always be muddy and you could almost not get through it. And when, when you went out to Dave West, out to Dave Backcombers, when you got to the bottom of the flat out there, that was the same way. Okay, uh, that's, that's what I'm going to grab a rope right I don't remember which one it was, but. Uh, what year was that, Dave? Uh, what, what year did they put that in? 1963, I think, Gene. I, huh? work, I was working with the county. You were working with the county? Walked every inch of that road all the way past there. Now you're talking about Cedarville Road. Yeah, the back 1963. I think he's right on that date because I remember my wife was out. You said you had to see where you went out. Pardon me? 63? But it's real close to there because I just, I was the first year I worked with the county. And we went. That could have been. Yeah, I don't so, recall. Okay. But that, that one, the, the other change now is that I, I, I can't believe the traffic through there and I can't believe the trucks that are going by there. Uh, this is the funniest looking depression I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, see, 26, uh, 26 did not go all the way through as it does right now. Uh, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the first bridge that crossed the creek where the bridge is right now. That was 1927, 1928, and that was actually the steel, uh, an iron truss, a truss uh, bridge. Um, the engineer on that was uh, uh, Memler, Melton Memler, and he ended up uh, what, marrying uh, Sam Frank's daughter, mm -hmm. as I recall. And one of the things- Frank's uh, brother-in-law. <laughs> one, one of the things that Memler did leave us, believe it or not, uh, he took a series of about 20, 25, uh, Browning photographs of the construction of that bridge, which we have copies of, and they they were it's a wonderful um, uh, actually story of the construction of that particular bridge, and of course that bridge then was uh, torn down 38 I think about 1938 when the concrete bridge uh, was uh, put in. And it's interesting. Uh, how many people remember Margaret Frank? Okay. It was interesting. Uh, in, 1930, in 1938, when Margaret, when they were putting the road in, I think it was 38, when they were putting the road in, she wrote to the State Highway Department to get some estimate of costs and so forth and asked 
uh, how much did it cost to build the the old bridge, and uh, how much was it going to cost to tear the old bridge down and put up the new bridge? And it turns out that it was going to cost more to tear the old bridge down than it did to construct it in the first place. <laughs> so, but prior to that, prior to 1928, of course. Uh, the road, in effect, stopped right where Bark House, or a little bit farther beyond, right where the, where the creek is at the present time. What about in the in the corner across from you, the two corners across from you, from your station, from your station now? Yes, yeah. where you got the um, where you had the, the car wash at the present time. What was that? That that car wash has only been there how long? Dave, when did you take that out there? Oh, about eighty-two. Yeah. 1982? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, after that, that he built that up there. But it was a standard office station. Okay. Very convenient. Okay. Who had it? Very convenient. Okay. And in fact, uh, our family lived there for a few years. In, in the, the station? No. Well, yeah. It was, all, it was a house built oh. connected right to it. Okay. Okay. Now, what about where the mobile station is at the present? Well, that was uh, uh, the people that lived there, as I recall, were Jews. Jews. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. And after that was changed when? How long ago? Ten years? Fifteen? Longer than that. Yeah. What? Our time was 1965, 66. Yeah. 66 through 70. In a mobile station? That was a garage and gas station, the first one. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, how many people remember the, the Barkow uh, or the gas station that was up in the north end of town before Barkow went in there? Okay. I was very fortunate the other uh, other day. You know, I heard all kinds of stories about what had been there before. I had one photograph that showed the, ga uh, the gas pump. I didn't have a picture of the station itself, but a picture of the gas pump. With a with a car from either the late 1920s or coupe from either the late 1920s or the 1930s, and uh, with gas being pumped into it, and a, a couple, an older couple, standing by the car, and of course we always wondered who they were. Well, it turns out that on the back of this car was you know one of these spare tires, and it had an advertisement on the back for the bright spot. Now, does anyone remember where the bright spot was? Well, it was the only tavern in town. Uh, you remember Paul? Vaguely. Vaguely? Okay, you know where the old, where the old jail is? Uh, the old Bill's Hall? Okay, we got the alley to the right. Yeah. Okay, the garage next to it. Yeah. Was that Max Fox? Who it was Max Fox. Max Fox. Max Fox. Pardon? Go Rose. Right. Anyway, Max, well, he, he, he advertised, he advertised that it was the only night of the Iron Hall of Cedar. <laughs> You know, you get all kinds of stories of what was a barber shop at one time, he sold candy, he sold tobacco, but no one ever really was talking about the card games that used to go out in the back room. Who knows what happened back there? But anyway, that was that was the only picture I had showing anything at all about that particular station uh, until I talked to Elmer Heibacher uh, about two weeks ago. I, I, I was speaking to him because I was trying to get him also to come and join us. and. Uh, he sent me some pictures of the station, and he sent me one that showed the station prior to 1963, and then he said that station was torn down, and in 1964, a new station was built there, and he sent me a picture of the, both the 63 and the 64 station, and then uh, he was telling me about how one of the bar cows, and I don't recall which one it was, he used to work part time at the station and part time selling cars out of the lot there. And of course, then Barkhouse took over the entire thing and uh, did some remodeling, rebuilding, and now, of course, the entire thing has been torn down and everything there is, is new. But uh, uh, Elmer said that uh, one of the Barkhouse, I don't recall which one it was, uh, he would uh, he'd be sitting there selling. His two or three cars that he had for sale, used cars, yeah. and uh, in his spare time he would pump gas. And was John Barco. Was it John? John worked at my He worked at Ness. I'd like to intervene there a little bit because John worked for uh, McMess Company right. and sold cars, but the very first cars that he had to sell 
were in that brick house just immediately north of the old Methodist church. Mm -hmm. They had a little, little shed there, quite a shed. I don't know, five or six cars in there. Um, mm -hmm. We were good friends of uh, John, uh, Dad was in particular, mm -hmm. and uh, I bought my first used uh, Oldsmobile from John <laughs> at that location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were the one who got started, huh? <laughs> that, was, that was a 1946 old video. Uh, Didn't that shed just have three sides? The south side was, was old. Uh, uh, at both ends, and, 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 and partially the north side of that shed was, was uh, closed down. The whole yes. south side was all open right. to the yeah. elements. Right. right. Uh -huh. And the north side is, is on my property. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, John Barclay was old car That's oh, where Irma, Irma Reinhardt used to go there at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Henry Ford buying yeah. 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 tickets out, but he worked at Brooklyn then. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But anyway, that was the, the story that uh, uh, Elmer had given me. Uh, uh, what I'd like to do is if there are, are any particular questions from the audience or any other, anything you want to add to what they have told you so so far, so I don't get too far into it. Not, Give the audience a chance to say. I just wonder if anybody remembers when Highway 26, only one lane was paved. Remember that? It, for a while only, they didn't finish both lanes at one time. Only one, one lane was paved, the other side was gravel. It probably was a short time, but I remember <laughs> that 26. Now, are you referring to uh, uh, when the Route 26 was reconstructed? Or the, I think the it was, like, I think it was what it was first made. Because I remember back in 1936 when we had all that severe snow, uh, that it was blocked, totally blocked with snow. Well, this would have been in the 20s. Would have been, okay, that's before my time. <laughs> <laughs> my father ran the shop at that mobile station, and a fellow named Mosquito Wilton ran the gas, gasoline powder. Yeah, Clara was in the steel. Yeah. And the fellow that owned the station was Len Wilson, the old brother. And uh, at that time, there were no homes to the north of the town. Well, he was road there. Huh? There was a road beyond the... Oh, yeah, there was, yeah this was this is during my time. Uh, oh, really? but there was a road there. <laughs> but there were no yeah, homes. Yeah. Yeah. Like they had a cement platform up there about that square. And I don't even know what you call it, but they shoot the <coughs> clay, they had a trigger to shoot the clay pigeons. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, they shoot for the, and they would shoot up to the, the, the closest house would have been Judge Shaw's house. Cedar Hill. Yeah, Cedar Hill. So we did end up shooting the shoot clay pigeons up there, up to the, right to the north of that, that job. There was no other homes up there. Yeah. Well, no, you remember that? No. You know? Of course. It's interesting that you mentioned steel. So, so you don't know a line or not, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> Is he as good as Leroy? I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned Steve because he's the guy who was in that picture mm -hmm. pumping the gas yeah. for, uh, yeah. for Sam Fox. <laughs> He ran the he ran the gas yeah. station. Okay. Now all you all you people, same as I, uh, we lived through we lived through the depression, the depression of the thirties. Uh, give me some idea what it was like. Okay. Glenn, uh, how you start? Me? Yeah, you. I think everybody was poor then. That's my my, <laughs> my understanding. Everybody had a a garden, so I say. We had a lot, a whole lot. We raised everything there, you know, potatoes and corn. A full bit, and uh, we were, I think, quite poor. Everybody, and you live <laughs> hand to mouth that things just about. And were there any jobs available in the area? There wasn't many jobs, really. No, I don't think there was. No, no, no there wasn't. No, it was. Uh, well, you didn't have any government programs really to speak of at that time, and that was the early part of uh, Roosevelt's terms. Right. And you had nothing like, well, Social Security, what, 36 when that came in? 35 and 6. Yeah. WPA. WPA? Yeah. Right. CCC. Okay. All right. P and the PWA. My father always used to say, I would always ask him what the difference was between the WPA and the PWA. And he used to say that the PWA made the shovels for the WPA to lean on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, how about you, Russ? You're slightly older than Len. Len's younger than Len. <laughs> One year. One year. <laughs> what were you doing at that time? Well, I was on the farm. See, my dad died when I was six years old, 1929. And mother kept two cows and uh, about 75 chickens. So I, I always had chores to do, and a garden. If I tell you how many quart of beans she used to can every year, she, she liked the yellow beans, not green beans. You wouldn't believe it. And, uh, the number of beans, she had one of these conservo, they called them. It was a cooker, two layers, seven quarts layer. Mm -hmm. And she'd fill that, it took three hours, it, process in that conservable tw uh, twice a day. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it would just sit on the one the old cook stove just sit on the spot. And uh, so we just lived out of the basement. <laughs> but the garden in the basement and the, and the chicken, the hen house, uh, the, she get a few eggs to more than we would eat. She'd take to the grocery store and they'd buy them and she'd buy flour and whatever to Baked the bread. I, I didn't know what bought the bread turkey like, but I can't know how long. <coughs> grew up on homemade bread. <laughs> and, uh, so, is that basically the only uh, outside income coming in would be from the, from the eggs and so on? What? Was that the only outside income, uh, the eggs? Yes, that's the, well, that's, that was the, the income for the farm. Uh, okay, and because, well, basically what you're talking about is the barter economy. Two, two cows. Uh, she had like eight gallon milk cans because she couldn't handle the ten gallon cans. And uh, were you able to sell the milk then too? It's, uh, we we never sold. I mean, out private people didn't come to buy milk. What we had all we wanted to drink, and then that was the uh, the cooler was a wash tub out there that put the tank can in and. We'd stir, keep stirring the milk till it would get cold in order to keep it in the summertime, for keep it over for morning. And, uh, when uh, they they pick it up and when when did your father pass away and at home were you then and had it pretty well take over the responsibility? Well, I was just six years old, so I didn't. Mother was uh, mother and father both. <laughs> she managed. She she wouldn't have thought of That's asking for relief. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I want to know about your Swiss cows. How did you get into that? The Swiss cows. How did you do that? How did you do that? Later. Well, uh, Dad was just uh, just getting into brown Swiss when he got sick and passed away. And uh, they were all young. Mother wouldn't keep any of them because she didn't want to milk them young cows. She milked the old cows that was she was familiar with. And so we didn't have uh, 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 brown Swiss then. But I had it in my heart, I guess, and I, I wanted brown Swiss. And uh, Ray Falby, I don't know if anybody knew Ray Falby, he had a herd of a couple of miles of it. And then we got, I, we got, I got my start from him. I bought my first registered animal in 1942. I bought two calves. And of course, uh, in those days, that was uh, before artificial insemination. So we would, when the time the cow to be bred, we would take them over to the neighbors that had a bull. We would lead them, lead the cows over there to get bread, and uh, that's uh, that you weren't Swiss either. The, 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 the Paul Crater's father had a herd of Guernseys, uh, and that's he preferred the Guernseys to the Holstein. Uh, Charlie Reamer, on the other side of the road, south side of the road, had the Holstein bull, but she, 
we had a preference for Guernsey, so uh, for the most part, uh, we, they were Guernseys. And, uh, Okay, and I still have any more questions here from the audience. I want Jean to tell us about Halloween. <laughs> well, Halloween? Yeah. What about <laughs> any Halloween or a particular um, one? Any. With him, any. You want me to go to jail? <laughs> <laughs> tell me about you mentioned Halloween. And how about, well, look, years ago everybody had a, a, an outside toilet, you know. <laughs> and Halloween was a big thing for, I don't know why that ever occurred, but the thing was to tip the toilets over. <laughs> and uh, you were in that chamber? No, not me, but those other couples. That's right. Yeah. The next morning after Halloween, the uh, Blumel was the teacher. He sent these guys around and set these toilets back up again. <laughs> well, we happened to get around Ralph Cummins, which would have been... <laughs> I don't remember Ralph. He was out there. Yeah, and, 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 and Ralph was kind of feisty, and John Rodwick, uh, uh, the was a platter, they lived in town every year. And John was kind of like ahead of the rest of us guys. He had all kinds of camera equipment, and, he had those little chemistry sets that we never had. And, but when we got down to Ralph's, he objected to the, us turning over his outhouse. So he stood there with a gun. Well, John quick run back to his house, this is what you're referring to, gets his camera and takes pictures of Ralph with his gun. <laughs> and uh, No, no, he was outside, but uh, he but he was, we were just confronting, or he was confronting us or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> but after John got these pictures made up, he could even enlarge them, and then he would take them up to Bear's store and poke them. <laughs> and plus he would get some man, he turned down. John would come up with another picture. Now <laughs> well, that was the story about that. That's what he wanted to hear. So you see, I could go to jail. <laughs> Did you have one up on top of the old jail, too? Did you guys put one up on there? No, I think Berman Green and I got that old fire engine up there. <laughs> there was a little wagon or sir or whatever it was put on the roof of that uh, standard station. Uh, you know, across the street from the yeah. station. I, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> 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 We didn't have to worry about it in our house there. Yeah. It was made of brick. Yeah. So there's only a nice one in Old Town. I think that one couldn't be pushed over. Who's that? The one that we lived in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I know we got Bill Rindman just from a Blasey Bear store one time. I don't know how that Yeah. Well, most, I can say most of the time when during the Depression, uh, Bears was the only, well, basically the only store in town, wasn't it? Well, but well, Strom, 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 and during my time, Strom wasn't there, but high right, right next to the jail, right next to the jail, had one too. Yeah. Oh, oh, next to the jail, yeah. Well, next to the jail, that was the price. No, <coughs> that was Oswald. Oswald, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Late, late thirties, he was there, I think. Was, yeah. uh, but, okay. but Strom's were there. Uh, the Strom's were there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up, up in the years. Years. How long were, were Strom's? Were they up until the nineteen thirties? You know. I thought they went, they went out of business about the late 20s. I remember going for ice cream at Strohm's in the 30s. In the 30s? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Strohm's would have been there, and you would have also had been uh, uh, the Bears, Cobra right. Farm. Okay. Okay, but this. it was Bolden then. Uh, Bolden still? Before Bears. Bowman yeah, before, yeah, before Bears, Bear, it was yeah. Bolden. So. Yeah, was but I thought, that, I thought that Bears had uh, purchased that in the, maybe the middle 30s. Bowman's were there first. First, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. In fact, Bowman actually started his store there in 1908. 1908. Yeah, I don't remember Bowman's. Uh, well, but he, he, it's interesting, uh, Bowman's, um, I don't know if anyone, has, Dave, you know, you know the building we're talking about. Mm -hmm. one just, uh, as Dave knows, it's actually two buildings put together there. Yo. You know, if you've ever looked at that building on Cherry Street, on the left-hand side, it's got a square front and then it's got the other part on the right-hand side. Well, originally that part of the right-hand side was the, um, 
original Henny Buggy Company back in 1860, not by John Henny, but by his father, Jacob Henny. John Henny, when he came in, uh, early 1970s, um, he then moved farther down and another buggy company came in. But when Bowman started the store, uh, he, the part that's on the left-hand side, the square part, that originally was located next to, uh, I'll, I'll call it Bethel Pentecost House. Does everyone know where Bethel Pentecost lived there? Okay, that was originally located next to that particular house on Cherry Street across the street. And Bowman came in and he moved it across the street and down to the store and attached it. Am I right? Up to it's uphill. Pardon? It's uphill. It's uphill. Yeah. Up to the, yeah. But you got to remember, this was roughly sometime roughly about night. Well, we have a photograph that shows that store, that particular part added, and this photograph appeared in the 1910 um, history of Stevenson County. So it was moved prior to 1910. Full letter. Full letter is 1910 history. And since Bowman started in 1908, uh, well, actually started a little before that, but he went to that building in 1908, mm -hmm. he must have moved that somewhere between 1908 and 1910. But you're right, it is uphill. And he had to move it across the street and then up that. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, back to the Depression, I, I remember Dad telling me about a milk route. And I think that was during the Depression, wasn't it? That you and the grandpa's during the recovery from that. Uh, actually, um, we had the milk router on uh, on Cedar Bell ourselves, and we were living then where I'm living now. Dad rented that place in the 18 acres north of that, which is Oak Ridge subdivision, was our cow pasture. Um, we um, had seven milk cows. We delivered, uh, I think, around we had about 20 customers. We delivered milk for a nickel quart. It was back before pasteurization or anything like that. All we did was cool the milk and strain it and, and bottled it and delivered it in the old 1927 sugar leaf that we had um, as, as sort of rough and tumble on the game. And, uh, we uh, finally decided we weren't making enough money at, at uh, five cents a quart, and we raised it to six cents a quart. <laughs> <laughs> we lost three customers because we didn't want to pay the increase. But that was, uh, that was quite a short. You know, we had to uh, milk the cow and the cows, dad and myself, and uh, take care of getting the milk so that we could tell Bob it. And of course, it's part of the Force too. We uh, would deliver every night. I had to do that before I ever started uh, going out um, to chase around at the age of 18 or 19. I didn't start running around until I was 19. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, that milk had to be delivered before I went out. Were you charging the deposit on the bottles too? Pardon? Did you have the deposit on the bottles? No. No, you think you're going to get no, all the way out Last bottle is bad. Well, this was a low price area because it was playing where I lived at that time. It was a dime, dime quart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I remember the problem we used to have is in the winter time you had to make sure you got out there very quickly before the thing froze and all the cream went up off the top, you know, and came right. off. That's right. Yeah. Pardon me? We all the shop for the yeah, Alan. Anybody remember Leeds Speed Store? We used to stop there and buy scratch feed or chickens years ago. Where? Leeds Speed Store? Right over on the Stevens. South end of town. South end of town. Well, one of the one of the buildings is still there. One of the buildings is still there. Um, Leeds Speed Store. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, are there any more questions we have? I promised these people that they wouldn't have to work more than 45 minutes. Well, I, I would like I would like Dad to tell the story about hen tapped and potatoes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hen, hen tapped and the potatoes. Who's that? Who's one of the Dad? Dad, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, almost a ritual with uh, with Tim. 
he, we called him Hamlet. Um, he, we, of course, were the living Hamlet just down the lane uh, in front of us. At that time, uh, we uh, had the old land from the, the alley at Hempass Barn all the way back. Four and a half acres was uh, the amount of acreage there. That uh, front area, uh, they had uh, planted in the garden, and of course, when uh, we then bought the place ourselves in 1955, we continued to put the garden down there in the front. Well, it was good fertile ground because most of Ken's uh, horse manure went on that <laughs> patch of ground. And uh, so we, uh, we raised a, a lot of good potatoes there, and Ken would come up, check through on our, our potato supply, find about four or five of the largest uh, uh, potatoes. And then he'd go around town bragging about uh, what great potatoes they were that we grew. We never seen them again. <laughs> <laughs> but we, just, we enjoyed that. And Ken, uh, of course, we, Ken helped us a lot. We helped him. That was good advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill, you had a question? Just a cemetery story. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I don't think any of the men on the board had anything to do with it, but if you read back in the minutes, and then I remember the year that, as I read about it, in the 1940s, some stones got chipped over. And the two young lads that uh, actually did it were, were found, and the father said to the board, you know, you don't, there won't be any problem. These two lads are going to put them right back up. And I don't, Len and Gene would have been about that age, but I don't think they would have been. I remember that, Bill, and it wasn't Len and Gene. <laughs> you obviously you know, you know who it was then. Uh, oh, okay. That is an old idea. Okay. Anyway, I have a question of, uh, yeah, question of Paul. Uh, Leroy was uh, our commander of the Legion, yeah. and uh, uh, I know one year he told us, or reminded, not reminders, he told us about the story of uh, breaking up the still down on the uh, uh, Henny, Henny Farm? No. No, no, no. no. on the Holden no. Farm. Oh, no. oh, no. The Holden no. Farm. The on the Adam Farm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know all the particulars, but maybe Paul might remember some of that. Yeah, I remember that quite vividly. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell you everything, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, Louis Peters, uh, Albert Peters was the father. Uh, he had two sons, Louis and uh, Roy. They, uh, they farmed the place. I can, I can remember uh, when they uh, moved their equipment through town. This is an old gravel road, you know, it was Cherry Street was all gravel, so was Mill Street and so forth. Uh, and uh, they uh, had an awful lot of baled hay on wagons. Nobody thought anything about it until later it came out. They were moving in a still. And they camouflaged it in, on the wagons. Okay. Um, they okay. And they uh, they made quite a bit of uh, liquor there, alcohol, in the one barn. I believe the barn is still the one that is standing there yet. Um, and uh, that was just right around the corner <coughs> from Eugene, uh, across the bridge and on the left hand side. Um, anyway, one day there's a fire broke out and uh, an insurance. A uh, salesman happened to be going by at the time and noticed the fire and alerted them to it. And, and uh, um, I don't remember uh, what fire department ever came to put the fire out, but then it was discovered that the still was in that in that part of the barn. Um, they uh, they were uh, were tried, found guilty, uh, but. Only two of them went to jail. Albert and Louis. Roy stayed back to, or no, Albert, Albert, uh, and father, and and uh, Louis went to jail. Roy stayed, that's right, because Roy stayed back to farm the farm. He was permitted to do that according to the, the sentence. 
And uh, so that was that was the end of the still. It was the only still that I ever recall ever being in, in our area. <laughs> well, it was in found anyway. <laughs> yeah, the, well, I, I was off, in fact, Paul and I were discussing that uh, earlier uh, today. That was in 1936 when it was discovered. And, um, you know, you wonder where did they get the grain from? You know, where did they get the grain to, to have, have to still operate there? Obviously, they, 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 they must have pulled off the farm that said they were farm that the whole thing. Um, even up uh, or, uh, uh, on Pine Hill. That, uh, as a matter of fact, I hunted a lot of pheasants up there as a, as a youngster myself. But uh, they had that whole area as well as everything up to the Cedarville Town Line Road. Part of that farm was on the other side. I don't think they ever farmed that part of it. I don't recall that. Well, they also had a, a couple of fields on, the, on both sides of the school here that they That's farmed. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah, right. right. Yeah. <clears throat> right over here. And right. Down here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's about five acres. Right on this side of the, of the school building itself. So, well, they haven't farmed that for a number of years now. And they still own that property. Pardon? That family still owns the property. Oh, sure. Uh, right. so, oh, like, like, three, like three, three, well, about 300 acres altogether. <coughs> uh, but, but believe it or not, by the way, Marset, the owner, is a member of the Historical Society, too. <coughs> a, very, a very wonderful person. Get it. Going back to the uh, farm where they had the still on it. Um, when that happened, Uncle Clyde, Clyde Kaiser, was telling me that uh, he and Catherine and Dale walked down there to see what was going on. And Dale was just a little tot. On the way back home, he started to get sick, throwing up. And they figured that it was the smell of the mash <laughs> in the area, it was a hot day, I guess, or something, and, and he got sick from breathing that because he was lower than they were. <laughs> I think the irony of the story is that the insurance company handling the particular uh, the building was the one that was started by John Adams, <laughs> and, and, which, by the way, is still in existence. It's up at the office is located up in Orangeville. 